the, basically what I was messing about yesterday, I was thinking about Inspire on Monday, and I've made this sort of brochure about the history of the Royal Exchange. It's very simplistic. It's stuff that you probably all know anyway. Um, so it's something to get excited about. But I thought maybe if, uh, you know, on the Inspire sessions, people come along to the, the first time, it's quite useful to have yeah. some kind of... Uh, yeah. you know, the building, you know. Mm. So this is what I've done. So um, if you, it, given that I'm not, things are not that brilliant this morning, I, I'll do my best to to get there with the least fuss, he said. <laughs> Someone's wound him up, he's going at double speed. Sharing <laughs> screen. Actually, what I forgot to see, I haven't shared screen. That's probably why I'm not doing very well. Share screen. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, basically, we start in 1729 when the first Royal Exchange was built by Sir Roswald Mosley, which is a name which. Uh, uh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, the Mosleys uh, owned great tracts of. Um, the Greater Manchester region. There's lots of Mosley roads and Mosley halls and Mosley commons and all the rest of it, all of which were owned by that illustrious family. We've got obviously we've got Mosley Street, uh, which is one of the main arteries through the city centre. Um, but anyway, uh, presumably he was the numero uno landowner at the time, and uh, but it was built for exhibitions and travelling acting companies and cockfights. Uh, apparently popular at the time. Uh, gained a reputation as a place of ill repute. All these the pillars, which we still have, don't we? Some of them anyway, but I mean, I don't know quite how. But I imagine it was pretty horrendous at the time. Did he uh, get a direct hit, do you know? Yeah, I mean, took the roof off, yeah. So, uh, I suppose it, but it was probably an incendiary bomb rather than a, you know, so... That caused a lot of damage, wouldn't it? Um, anyway, uh, and there you are, there's one for Derek. Um, Princess Margaret reopened it in 1952. It took care. It took, uh, I don't know if you remember, I remember when I was a small boy, uh, there was a lot of derelict buildings around the city centre. <laughs> The free trade hall was similar. That was had a direct hit, and that was reopened around about the same sort of time as this. So, but for several years after the war, there were various little uh, pockets of boarded up land, really, in the city centre, where where uh, it seemed to take an awful long time to uh, to restore some of them. I suppose it was all about money. I remember that Sale Town Hall took a hit as well, and part of that was. Uh, the, the corner of that was taken off, but uh, I used to pass it on my way to primary school. But um, it, it, you know, it seems to take a long time for these things to be sorted out. Anyway, there's the building as we know it now, pretty much uh, what we see today, uh, certainly from the outside. Anyway, uh, uh, do we all love this building? I don't know. Yes. Yeah. 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 And we all seem to be terribly, all seem to be terribly attached to it, wasn't really now. Uh, uh, anyway, and, and then trading finished in 1968. Uh, as you know, the, all, all the, the the last prices are up on still up on the wall there, but uh, I think they are anyway. Yeah, I've, I I've had a look for a while, but uh, I presume they still are. And this was this was the last day of trading, uh, and obviously it was a diminished. Uh, um, they were going to pull it down. Um, it was a, a building that nobody wanted, which is strange to think, isn't it, now? But uh, uh, fortunately, um, there's a company which was, uh, well, I forget the name of it now. Was it? Was it, it was a university theatre, I think, that was uh, look, looking, was looking for a, a, a yeah. home, basically. And so they, I think they were either given it by the, whoever owned it, the city council maybe, or it was given, they got it very cheaply. Uh, 
but it was officially reopened in 1976 um, for performance. Uh, I, I still, even though it was built in 1976, I still, it still has the wow factor for me when you walk in with the, this sort of uh, seven-sided lunar spacecraft weighing 150 tons. And uh, most of the module is suspended from the pillars in the ceiling. It's only the bottom bit that touches the floor. Do you know who designed it? I can't remember his name. Um, I'll look it up and let you know. But uh, it, it was, um, I think there was a competition, wasn't it, to, to yeah, yeah. To see who, uh, but I think it's just amazing the fact that a it is so you know, incongruous with the rest of the building, if you like. But in fact, it really works. You know. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's like a spaceship has landed in a space and it's being used again. You know. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Um, now. This, uh, the, the first production was uh, here. This, this is Sir Tom Courtney or Tom Courtney or whatever, um, who was in the first production was The Rivals, which hence the uh, Cafe Park gets its name, I suppose. But this is Tom Courtney, who was one of the, um, well, he's an associate performer. In fact, he was very much involved in the early days of uh, the success of the theatre, I think. I found this um, program of the Duchess of Malfi, which has got all kinds of famous names on it. Can you see it or not? I don't know if I can. No. Mm -hmm. We can see it, we can't read it. Well, there's uh, Julian Corey, Mike Gwilym, Helen Mirren, uh, I think Pete Postlethwaite's in there somewhere. Um, really quite big names from the theatre and, and, and it was in it was in this was in the early 80s i remember it's a terrific production but uh, there you go um then along came the ira in 1996 and although uh the bomb didn't actually uh, hit the theater, it's you can see that the damage looking up Cross Street there, Corporation Street, Cross Street. Uh, there's the side of the theatre. Um, this this was the Ardale Centre, which came onto Corporation Street. Uh, and and you know, that post box, which is still there, is around about here at the bottom of the picture. Um, the building moved 18 inches, which seems right. Kind of colossal really isn't it the fact that a building that size actually moved so it was dangerous but it wasn't falling down so uh, uh extensive damage of course and the theater was closed for restoration for two years and it cost 32 million pounds to put it right it it, 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 it it wasn't just manchester they did birmingham and london yeah, but I mean, this... it, 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 it was ridiculous. You know, I, I mean, it was it, it was it was a crazy um, thing. You know, it, uh, Bernard's exactly right. And, you know, all these places got big Irish working class communities. And I, I, I mean, it, it, it was it was crazy. You know, I mean, I mean, those of us who supported the cause of freedom from British ruling class, you know, I think it's ridiculous that Ireland is divided and um, meant that, you know, the ruling class, um, obviously, people were disgusted and it was ri ri ridiculous. And I, I can remember us having arguments, you know, at um, political meetings in London with people who were supporting this strategy and and, and it, it was it, it was cra crazy you know it was, it, it was it, the largest bomb on mainland britain ever apparently it, it was was it yeah. Yeah. well they did I, I think it's quite amazing it's quite amazing that there was no loss of life actually i know they they did give a good warning so maybe they were feeling a bit sort of eighty thousand people shopping in the under center at the time yeah, and then, yeah. 
Anyway, well, sorry. This, this was the second, this was the second bomb in Manchester as well. It wasn't the first IRA bomb. There was one a couple of years before because uh, oh, okay. uh, we were evacuated from our, our office in St Peter's Square because of it. But uh, but it, it wasn't quite. It wasn't anywhere near as as serious as this one. But uh, it was. Graham, taking it back to theatre, I think you, you, I I put my hand up before. Um, after 1968, the the theatre group that started, that became the Royal Exchange, I think they were called something like the 1969 theatre group. They had 1969 in their name. Yeah. And, and, and before, you know, it was formalised into the Royal Exchange, their theatre was quite radical. They were doing it, you, you know, in other sites. But it was connected to the, it was connected to the university. It was part yeah, of the, and yeah. and and they did some re re really really good stuff. You know, I, it, well, it, that, it, that, and that's how Tom Courtney came to be involved in it because he was yeah uh, yeah. That, yeah. He also married uh, the wardrobe mistress from the Royal Exchange, so he spent a lot of time in Manchester after that. So uh, there you go. I went to see uh, Tom Courtney and Brian Murray do a, a a talk in the Royal Exchange a few years ago. Um, it, it, it was kind of you know a Q and A thing, uh, and it was really really interesting actually because Tom Courtney, by, by which time he was probably you know a, an oldish man, but uh, uh, he was he, he got really kind of glassy eyed about the Royal Exchange. And he was he was sort of uh, ex sort of extolling its virtues, if you like, and he he, he said. Of all the theatres appeared in, which is probably quite a lot around the world, he's, it was it was the most uh, satisfying to perform in. Uh, but uh, he he did, he did, did some because, because brilliant of your... stuff there. Sorry, he did some brilliant stuff in that period. Yeah, did, yeah. You, did, did you see Crime and Punishment with 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 Leo McCann? I didn't know, but I mean, no, uh, I, 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 it was absolutely brilliant. It was one of the first things, and um, he, he also played Andy Cap. Yes, with music, yeah, music you know. by Alan Price. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just saying, but he was actually, um, you know, he, he said, it in terms of uh, from, from an actor's point of view in, in yeah. relationship to the audience, a brilliant space. Um, but I guess. Tom Courtney didn't need to be mics, but there you go. But, um, anyway, let's let's not go there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, they're all mic now, aren't they? No, they're not. Yeah, they are. At the moment, they, they are. Music, they are in musicals. No, they were mics for the last two productions. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were. Yeah. So there you are, Bernard. No, no, no. But, um... Well, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe it was the fact of that mic going on about it that had some effect. There anyway. you go, Bernard. Annals of history. <laughs> uh, the the, the, the theatre moved its production to a debris site at Upper Campfield Market. Um, yeah. They put they put a big tent inside the the market space. That everyone remembers that. Uh, so they carried on uh, performing until such time as the uh, the theatre was usable once again. Uh, then along came pandemic, of course. Uh, so the theatre suffered another closure, um, but it is now slowly returning to its former glory, he said with cross fingers, under the joint directorship of Bryony and Roy. And there they are. And this is the theatre we know and love. And uh, hopefully to continue to serve all sections of the community, both on site and in its outreach capacity. This is the this is the tent, which a lot of you will have already experienced. I think this was at um, was it Stanley Bridge, the range. Mm. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the performance in, in that lovely round theatre where you have some cord cardboard seats. That's uh, kind of amazing. It's wonderful. I think it was Stanley Bridge. And yeah. Here are some of our greatest, <laughs> some of our greatest oh. stars. There you are. Our alumni. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I loved that. That was fabulous. Mm. Okay, okay. Anyway, that, that's all I have to. Offer, so uh, that was well, really good. That was really interesting. I'll have a good look at it on Monday. 
it doesn't get promoted at all, the building. Mm. You know, as you, you know, as you, I totally agree with you that it sits wonderfully in the space. It's an outstanding, astonishing piece of architecture, really. And we mm. undersell it, don't we? I think. But I, I still think there's, it, it's, it's a piece of Manchester that a, a huge percentage of the population doesn't know anything about. Yeah, it's a hidden yeah. gem. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, it's wonderful. And it's kind of like, I always feel like grabbing people and saying, look at this, look at that, you know, kind of like dragging yeah. them in off the street. Um, well, I think they could make more because of it, I've been there, there when, you know, when we used to do the um, Elders Mondays when we actually we're in the hall itself and yeah people, people have come in and never been in before people from around the world quite often were absolutely gobsmacked by it yeah um, yeah yeah I, I think they could be more imaginative about how they use the rest of the space not just the theater bit i agree yeah, and, i mean for yes, example you could, you could have tours of it where part of the tour was little productions that you you know people actually acting as part of it so it's a mixture of having a look around and feeling mm. a bit what it what it was like you know to to get because people won't just come on a tour of this is what it is i think something a bit more imaginative would work but i think that's a brilliant idea you used to have great big portraits of people who had appeared in productions in the theater and they've all yeah. gone yes and there's no reason why they couldn't be brought up to date with more recent stuff you know, like the elders and all the rest of it. But Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> uh, in the, in the, uh, in, in the, the second half of the 1980s, I had uh, two children's operas in there. And, uh, uh, but Bernard, one, one, one of them, it was called There Was a Ship, and it was a, a setting of the rhyme of the ancient mariner. We wrote it with uh, schools in Oldham. And uh, all the area was used, not just the internal part with the Manchester Royal Exchange. Excellent, had, excellent. Yeah. yeah. And the, the effect was magic, where you can hear all these voices from without coming to within and surrounding. It was the ghosts of the, the, of the past. You never saw them, but we used them on the outside of the, the internal part. They, they uh, could have like the Cirque, Cirque du Soleil, couldn't they, with people um, abseiling down the columns and stuff. Health and safety, health and safety. Oh, goodness. You know, you've got to be careful there. We've got to have, you, you've got to have lots of floating floors that will <laughs> save people that fall off. Um, well, maybe the professionals doing that. Yeah, yeah. That's, you could have sort of do solo things around, really, in the space. Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah. That's fantastic, isn't it? I think it'd be a wonderful venue for that. I yeah. do too. <laughs> I, I love, I love the French word for stuntman, which is cascadeur. Oh, and you cascade everywhere. That, yeah. uh, a bit like a matador and a cascade, eh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't think we get too, too many elders doing that. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> I think they get the elders cascading around the pillars, you know. But... We could have a Cirque du Soleil of elders. Le vieux cascadeur. But uh, it'd be, we, we, and I, you know, if we ever get our mu musical, <laughs> it, it, uh, to be using the outside of things as well, you know, the the... Because it's such a brilliant space acoustically as well, and, and you people can use... rushing out into the street as well, into the square, you know, downtown square. <laughs> <Yeah>. Woo! <laughs> the <laughs> elders rushing. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where's my stick? When we did the comedy show in the Great Hall, Andy said that it was a awful place, a space acoustically, <laughs> and that he'd learnt that from previous experience. And that's why we had microphones for that. Well, exactly, you can mic up if needed. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Bluetooth's been around for quite a long time now. It's <laughs> <laughs> blue, blue, blue what? <laughs> yeah, we could do a Viking, a Viking Is that right, Gordon? Is that right about it's Blue? Absolutely, yes. yeah, that Gordon. <laughs> 
Remember. I'm in the full agreement with Bluetooth, yes, yes. <laughs> Everybody oh, should have see. one. Yeah. <laughs> Has the theatre kept the posters from all the productions? I would imagine so somewhere. Maybe, maybe it's a Swan Street or somewhere. But... Yeah, possibly. May, yeah, uh, just thinking uh, uh, an exhibition of those. Yeah, yeah. Would be brilliant. I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah, with videos of some of their productions, which presumably they have videoed. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. Is, that, is it a group of suits? Who is the Royal Exchange then? Um, well, we there you go. We don't really Us. know. <laughs> well, we are part of it. I'll have a look. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye